Hello, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your September monthly tarot reading. This will be a general tarot reading for those who strongly resonate with the sign of Gemini. Highly recommend you watch your rising sign this time around for these September monthly readings. Please come into the reading with an open heart, an open mind, a desire to learn something or better yourself. If the messages that come through don't resonate, feel free to push them aside. They may resonate for you at a later date or sometimes not at all. Assume they're going out to someone else if it doesn't make sense, if it feels strange or foreign. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance. That being said, let's try and have some fun. We're going to jump in. Let's see what's coming out. Like you're starting out hot and heavy with the tower. Let's see what, what that's going to be. Let's see what that's going to be. <clears throat> These cards are a little sticky. It's a new deck, so bear with me. What's up, Gemini? How you been? Ooh, Ten of Cups coming in. Love that. See, it's not all bad. It's not all towers. <laughs> I'm kidding. The tower is not always bad. All right, Nine of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Ooh, that makes me think of this art exhibit I went to in L.A. I think it was at um, LACMA. It's all these street lamps outside, and it's just really beautiful. I don't know why that's coming through, but maybe Los Angeles is significant to some of you. Um... Yeah, a walk, a walk at night, a walk under the stars, a walk under street lamps. Maybe that's a romantic setting for a date or something like that. Maybe some of you are working in an art gallery or going to an art gallery. I don't know why. Sometimes messages come through and they're significant for some of you. So, all right, where are we going to start off? I mean, I guess we start off with the tower, right? It was the first card out. So this feels like um, a disassembling of a family. Um, and that can mean a lot of different things. It could be that some of you have children that are going off to college, right? And it's like a change up in the household dynamic. Some of you might literally be moving. Um, or there could be lots of arguments and chaos in your house right now. Just like a lot going on. Yeah, I see it more as just like kind of drama unfolding for some of you. Um, some of you may be moving out because you're moving in with a... Uh, I'm sorry, some of you may be moving out of an apartment so that you can move in with a romantic prospect with Mars in your house of dating. Um, there might be much more of a focus on sex and pleasure and the body. Uh, yeah, especially the body. That's very interesting. Let's see. We'll get to dating, though. I'm, I'm trying to see what's going on with this tower. So opposing it is the high priestess. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, some of you, it just feels like there's, I'm hearing the word windfall, which is kind of a, a weird, I, I associate that more with money, but maybe that's it. For some of you, it seems like there's a major change or circumstance that is necessi necessitating you to either change locations or distance yourself from the family. If you already don't live with your family, that may have to do with creating better boundaries or a better distance, maybe like emotionally, um, so that so that there's a little bit more breathing room. It feels a little bit suffocating right now. And so there's a need for you to break out and do something untraditional and be independent. Um, that's sort of what I'm getting off this card initially. But it's it's interesting because I see this dynamic of feeling like you're among the chaos and always around people in this desperate need to get away and be alone. But then when you're alone, it's like, oh, I'm lonely. I don't like this, which is such a Gemini and trait, right? It's that twins. It's that duality. It's, it's the both sides of yourself. Um, so maybe there's lessons in coming to terms with the fact that, uh, you know, appreciate, appreciate when people are around, um, but also know that sometimes time alone, while you may struggle with it initially, it can be very rejuvenating and healthy and reviving. Um, you got to recharge your battery. Um, and some of you, speaking of which, quite literally need to like unplug. Like I see you overusing devices this month, which it is Virgo season. So that kind of comes with, you know, technology and, you know, planet Mercury ruled sign as you are as well. Um, but yeah, some of you, it's like you got to put down the phone. It's like it's it's just killing your brain cells this month. And I see you maybe have something having some insomnia because of it. It's like your eyes are just always staring at a screen. So um, I know you're staring at a screen right now to watch this. I appreciate it. But afterwards, please turn it off and go for a walk in the woods. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this tower in terms of what it is bringing to you. It's bringing you more independence. It's making you stronger. Um, the tower always comes in like, you know, in the greater picture in tarot, right? The tower comes in when we are stuck in a situation that we have outgrown 
or it is unhealthy. Um, it follows the devil. So the devil can be things we're just kind of energetically tied to, but they're not always the healthiest. So sometimes when we're unable to remove ourselves from a tricky situation or we just don't recognize how deep we're in it, sometimes the tower comes through to, to wake us up, right? Um, and I don't like to sugarcoat things. I'm, I'm pretty much a realistic reader when it comes to giving you, you know, the truth. Um, the tower can be uncomfortable, but I mean, when is <laughs> very rarely in life is growth and expansion in our you know spiritual development a comfortable process right so sometimes the tower comes through unexpectedly it can be shocking or unexpected twists and changes or it can just be a complete change up of lifestyle to kind of realign us to the right path to get us to the next major milestone in in our life and our trajectory and our in our work on this planet on in this lifetime right if that makes sense so yeah Understand that the tower is freeing you from something um, that you need to be freed from. And with that, yes, of course, there's going to be a period of adjustment. I do see a lot of you breaking free. Uh, for a lot of you, it feels like you're going off to college or metaphorically, you know, you're moving off on your own. Maybe you live with roommates and this is like your time to strike out and do something independently. Um, again, I do understand that there's going to be periods of sort of wallowing in this like oh i'm alone and i don't like this and i you know what could, i miss i miss what used to be feeling kind of sentimental and nostalgic for the past i would encourage you and there's a time and a place for that you know <laughs> i got lots of cancer in my chart i'm like the most sentimental person ever however there's a time and a place for that and then sometimes that doesn't serve us it's not useful to be very reminiscent of the past and how great it used to be because then it sort of puts blinders onto the future and how great things can be and not only that like realistically earth energy how great things are now despite this chaos despite this change up for some of you this change up is a wonderful thing but it's all about how you choose to view it um for a lot of you there could have been a health scare that really aligned you to a path of uh better living uh, in terms of your health regimen and your health routine that is like such a virgo message right um but i'm also saying that because coming up in like your hobbies and activities you do for pleasure there's literally a person working out so you know in a broader way spending more time on on your wellness mind body spirit maybe you're meditating more maybe you're going for a run every day maybe you're uh, choosing better foods to eat maybe you're cleaning up your diet um maybe it's more energetic base maybe you're choosing to uh discriminate more in relationships that don't add to your happiness and joy and overall wellness you know maybe you're not being that friend who's always the shoulder to cry on because you can't be around people you know in that low vibrational energy anymore right there is sort of like this this powerful change up and i do like it very much especially if you choose to look at it as like sort of giving birth to the new version of yourself and i know that might sound a little bit cheesy um but i think it's it's well overdue with the tower that always tells me like okay like enough is enough we need to we need to effing do this right um and, and the thing is you have the power to do it the only person stopping you is you that's typically what the seven of swords says to me um, is you talking yourself out of it. But the good news is because, and I don't mean to stereotype you at all, but because you're Gemini, you're very quick to talk yourself into it and then talk yourself out of it. But with that, you can talk yourself into it again and remind yourself why you did it in the first place. Um, and maybe for some of you, you, you're like, well, why, why did I move? Why did I take this job? Why did I do the thing? I had to, I had no choice. I was forced into it. Okay. So that's the circumstance. That's the scenario. We got to be present and ground ourselves and make the best of it. Right. I'm giving you like a little pep talk because I do see you a little bit challenged by sort of this like wallowing energy, but it doesn't have to be that guys. Um, you know, lean into your, your opposing sign, that Sagittarian optimism, choose to see things with rose tinted glasses if you have to, because it's going to get you through, you know, a little bit of an awkward transitional period. So choose to see the lightness in life, choose to see the bright side of things. That is going to be a, a secret ingredients to your uh, success in, in the month of September. All right. So let's see, you are going to have a new moon in, I believe your fourth house, if that's correct, correct in Virgo. Um, so there could be some new undertaking. Again, a lot of you may be getting a new house or a new apartment. Um, you may be purchasing new land or getting a second property. Um, some of you may be planning a trip to go visit home or go travel, especially to see family, if that makes sense for any of you. Um, some of you may be going on some sort of like 
artistic getaway or like spiritual getaway. I don't really know what that means, but I'm just going to put it out there for, for to make sense for some of you. I will say if you are planning on traveling, be prepared for delays. I, I absolutely see that. Um, and it's not going to necessarily cancel your whole trip, but definitely like flight delays or baggage delays or just things of that nature, like things messy at the airport, like missing your gate, like things, things of that sort. So in true Virgo energy, right, be over prepared, like prepare for worst case scenarios. So that way, if something goes, you know, astray, you know, you have a plan B, you have a, b a backup, you have someone you can stay with, you know, um, I don't think you shouldn't uh, or I don't think you should not not go on the trip. I think you should, but assume that there will be some some wacky miscommunications and delays because that's exactly where uh, Mercury is retrograding. Um, not necessarily in your house of travel, but yeah, something about travel plans. I, I'm just putting it out there. Um, but I actually see this potentially being a fun start. Um, it's complicated. It's complicated. I see you guys again. Same same energy with like the I can't put my phone down. I can't put my laptop down fidgety energy of like that's it i'm just i'm going to the beach today with nothing but a book and i'm just going to relax and read i think that's great for you but i see you getting there and not able to unwind and i don't say that to like disappoint you i'm just like we have to kind of get at the crux of like what's actually going on here like why are we unable to focus why do we feel so scattered um i mean ultimately i would say it probably has to do with grounding um restlessness yeah not not feeling like in touch with your creativity for those who are trying to do something that's slightly more creative, just not feeling inspired. And I think it's because you do have some major change up going on in your life that is taking, taking priority. <clears throat> I'm trying to give you advice here, but I'm trying to understand where the storyline is going. It's, it's a little all over the place. I'm not going to lie, Gemini. Um, yeah, I see you flip flopping a lot and changing your mind. But I think the universe is asking you to stick with it. When you set your mind to something, on, you know, honor your word to yourself. That's the thing. I don't necessarily see you letting down other people by not by not delivering the goods, so to say. It, it's like a little bit of self-sabotage with the Seven of Swords. It's like you either you got yourself into this predicament and now it's up to you to get yourself out or for some of you you were sort of forced out or forced into a, a, you know a situation and it's like okay sink or swim and a lot of you it's like you're really struggling to get past that place of like oh i'll just sink like don't do that don't don't do that gemini i'm calling you out on your bs you need to like lift yourself up and remember all the good things that you have in your life Gratitude is a good way to counteract, you know, sorrow and depression. It just is, right? What is that expression? If, if you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. You need to live in the present and seek out moments of fun amongst, you know, the responsibility. That's a big word I see here. The responsibilities that you do have. Um, let's talk about dating and then we're going to talk about work. Because I feel like I'm giving you kind of like these loose-ended things. And that's because like... It's not giving me specifics. I, I just, there's a lot of like focus on you and transforming you and how you approach things. And again, good follow through. Good follow through is really important this month. All right, let's talk about dating. Then we'll talk about work and career a little bit more. Uh, you have eight of pentacles. Are you dating a bodybuilder or an athlete? <laughs> I only say that because of the quite literal interpretation of this card. Uh, you could actually end up dating someone or be with someone who uh, they're like your new exercise buddy too. You might meet somebody in an exercise class or some sort of, you know, course that's good for your body. Maybe you're dancing, meditating. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're doing tap dancing. <laughs> um, let's see. Eight of pentacles, though, is a strong worker card. Um, so again, possibly you could meet someone at work. I don't know if it's that so much. The color yellow seems very important. I don't know if this person is blonde or they wear a lot of yellow or something about them is they just have like a very bright, I don't know. I don't want to say aura per se, but they just kind of sparkle. They might just have kind of like a fun personality, but I also see them as being like uber masculine, whether they are male or female or something else. Um, there's just more masculine energy coming through in, in your dating life, uh, in, in Virgo season in September. Um, let's see. So I actually feel like this person has good structure in their life. And I know this sounds a little bit funny, but it does serve a, a point. It's like they sleep very peacefully at night. 
um, because of like, it has to do with their routine. They have very well established routines of like, you know, work time, play time, you know, time with the kids, you know, online course, study time, like whatever it is they're doing, they have, it's like they have, they've cracked the code. They have it figured out. And so they are going to shy away from activities with you if it completely disrupts their life and their routine. It's not that they're a boring person and they don't take risks. I actually do like this energy very much. I actually think there's something tremendously great that you could learn from them or take away from them or mirror their lifestyle a little bit. I'm not saying, you know, completely uh, adopt their lifestyle, but it's something that you seem to be struggling with that they have figured out. And in a really cool way, I feel like that's why the universe has brought you guys together. Um, whether whether it's long term or short term or whatever it is, maybe you're just dating casually and you're not looking for exclusivity. Um, but this this could be a strong companionship. I, I do like that. Um, I do see you struggling with uh, not. It's not boundaries. It's not taking it personally when this person says, "Sorry, I can't." You know, I, I think this person is going to be really straightforward with you when they can't hang out, and there there needs to be some acceptance there. Um, in terms of this person can't spend every waking moment with you. So, yeah, okay. And with the high priestess, you know, that kind of Cancerian energy, sometimes that can be a little bit emotionally overwhelming. It can be a little bit, um, you know, cancer, cancers are the crab, right? So metaphorically, it's like they take those crab pincers and they just, they want to hold on to things and not let go. And so there needs to be some flexibility with scheduling and planning here. And if you're cool with that, I see it being really uh, fun and enjoyable. Um, but it happens in short spurts. It's not constant at first. Um, so yeah, especially with the hangman too, thank you. There's, there's like a little bit of waiting between each hangout. It's not like, okay, every night, five o'clock, we're gonna hang out. It, like it's, it's not that because this person has like a very full schedule. They may even have strong Virgo in their chart, just putting it out there. That being said, let's see, in terms of like, I think you guys are, like to cuddle together. I think there's something funny about shoes in this relationship. It's like you go shoe shopping or you wear the same size shoes or this this person accidentally put your shoes on or I, I have no idea what that is. There's some there's some funny inside joke about shoes with you guys or a shoe a shoe story that they told you that was really funny. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I see lots of cuddling. I think that's really sweet. I see a kitty cat. Um, I, I don't know what that is, if they're just particularly fond of cats, or they have one, or you have one, or that's a topic of conversation. Um, <laughs> maybe you go to a cat cafe, isn't that like an up and coming thing? That could be kind of cute. Yeah, ice cream dates. Um, your indecisiveness they find very adorable. Something about being very choosy, or um, picky, or uh, I, I don't know, they, there's something about your mind that they find really cute and fascinating and adorable. Um, <clears throat> I think they think you're witty as well. They like your sense of humor. Um, in terms of those, that's what I see kind of on, on dating. Um, in terms of long-term relationships or those who are already in a committed relationship, um, high priestess. So that can be a couple things. That can be a focus on family planning and motherhood. Um, if it's not that... To be honest, what I'm getting from this is confusion because you're looking for answers outside of yourself. Okay, some of you are might be wedding planning too. And I, I don't mean to go negative at all. I'm just, I, again, I, I, I read how I read. It is what it is. Some of you are like your wedding planning and it just feels like a shit storm. It's like you're just hitting a lot of roadblocks. Um, if that's the case, this too shall pass. Uh, you know, the Ten of Cups, I just have to be honest, this is like the most wedding-y wedding card I've ever seen, right? Unless it's like a prom or some sort of formal or something like that. Uh, maybe you're going to a wedding with your person, right? But some of you are wedding planning and it's, it, you're, it, it's going to live down in your memory as like just a source of, oh my God, thank God we never have to do that again. But what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I see you having a good wedding day. Um, but yeah, there's, there's like a lot of just messed up confusion in terms of like the planning of it. 
Um, and it's not necessarily between the two of you. It's all the extra bells and whistles. Again, everything outside of what you can control. So, you know, the band, the DJ, the, the catering, the, the dance hall, whatever it is. And all these planets are in retrograde right now, you guys. So it's like you're doing your best. Give yourself some credit. Like as long as you're showing up and doing your part, again, as long as you have good follow through, the rest will fall into place. But you may need to make some adjustments. And again, the idea of flexibility with your partner. We, we said that earlier. You might not get everything on your wish list. It doesn't mean it's not going to be, you know, a great time, a great party, but there's certain like negotiations or I think you guys know what I'm trying to say. There's certain not accommodations, but certain things that you're going to have to take into account that maybe you weren't anticipating. Those are just for okay, that's for those of you planning a wedding. I know I went on a side route here. Others, let's see. The high priestess is usually silent. Sometimes it represents a secret or not being the greatest communicator. Um, now in a high vibe, I like the high priestess. It could just represent Cancerian energy, but there's something about this that's a little bit pensive or trying to work through something. There could be some arguments with your partner. Um, again, if that's the case, I don't see it necessarily ending the relationship, but I do see it clearing out some some baggage that you know things that need to be decluttered so that you guys can grow and make room for for you know better energy in your relationship i feel like you're you're feeling left in the dark about something like your person isn't communicating with you about something and it might be about a move that you're considering or or possibly i don't know there could be the topic of conversation about a partner having to move for work and it feels like they're not necessarily considering you in the equation. It doesn't mean that they're not. It's that you guys need to like be vocal about where you're at and what you want because there might be a big uh, difference of opinion there. It's like, well, I don't want to move. You need to find a new job. And the other person's like, I love my job and I'm definitely moving. So we need to start like, you know what I mean? There's a little bit of like strong opinions. So I see you having, hold on, I'm, I'm going to finish that up. <clears throat> yeah, I, I see secrets coming into play and not necessarily, you know, um, it, it's not like cheating secrets. I don't, you know, I don't want to cast that. It has not, I don't see that at all. I just see people thinking things and not sharing it with their partner almost because they don't want to rock the boat or they're afraid of their partner's reaction, especially sort of like their emotional reactions to things. That definitely seems to be a factor in this equation. So again, something to work on, certainly not the easiest thing. Um, but what I am going to lead into is you seem to have very strong friendships this month. Um, you have some beautiful cards coming in here. You may even take some sort of trip to visit a friend. Um, there might be some sort of wedding or big event or party in a friend's life um, that, that feels very exciting. I see you dressing up to go do something or possibly buying, I don't know if it's buying new jewelry or there's just sort of this like excitement to go see friends. Um, I like that very much. You have big decisions coming up in your future and I do feel like it's, it's related to a relationship. Um, and so maybe for some of you, you are at a point where you're considering, is this my long-term person? You know, that that's totally an option here. Um, yeah, it, it's funny. This is all over the place, Gemini. It's like I have some of you who are like committing deeper and like planning weddings. Others of you, it, it seems like you're like on the brink of breaking up or divorce. But, but again, both people don't really... They don't know. It's like, I don't even think that's going to happen in Virgo season. I, it's almost like the seeds are being sown for, for you guys questioning about what you want in the long term. Because here's what I will say. Even if we remove any relationship, just in terms of what we're talking about, just the independence of you as a, an individual person, that right now seems really all over the place. So it's like, I'm not saying you need to know everything you want in order to be in a successful relationship. But if you're sort of struggling with some personal stuff, but then you're, you're using a relationship sort of to mask that or to escape it, that's sort of a challenging situation, right? It's, I don't think it's misleading to your person, but it's hard to make decisions together when you're having dis trouble making decisions for yourself. I don't mean to be harsh or rude or judgmental. That's just sort of how I'm seeing the cards. So at minimum, I would say take some time to yourself to really, really challenge yourself to like sit in meditation or journaling or something where you can kind of 
High Priestess is, is an excellent card of like getting out on paper what is going on inside. Those internal emotions that maybe you're having trouble processing on like a mercurial mental level, maybe we process them better through writing or through talking about it or you know maybe it's through art maybe through visualizing it or painting it or making a making a vision board it's like something's going on inside that we need to get it out in the open so that we can examine it and look at it and make a game plan or a strategy i think you need to do that for personal projects i also also think you need to do that sort of in terms of relationships and, and what you guys want it's not that it's not fixable but you need to decide if you're going to get on the same page and then go for it and some of you absolutely will with bells and whistles and success others of you are going to determine you know what maybe i'm better off doing this on my own um, which again is an option <clears throat> There's a lot uh, in terms of work. Let's talk about work and money. I feel like your reading is so long. Yeah, it is. Sorry, guys. Work and money. Um, I, I, again, feeling a lack of uh, creative energy for those who work in creative jobs or, or use creativity in some way. I see you feeling like your tank is empty. You need to go be inspired. And the key to go be inspired, I'm telling you, is in friendships right now. Friendships, 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 platonic or, or, you know, whatever, um, what is the term, uh, like friends with benefits, even if, you know, if that does it for you and that's inspiring, great, but you need to hang out with people to feel inspired, uh, and then go off and do that thing independently to, to, you know, get it out of you, um, so yeah, work might be a little bit of a struggle this month, Ten of Wands. I think you're just being strapped with a lot of extra responsibility. It doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, for some of you, I actually think there's a lot of work, but it might actually be a relief because it keeps you your mind busy. You're not kind of constantly in your head worrying about the things that you were worrying about because it's like, okay, I'm at work. I know what I'm doing here. I have to do this. Good. So for some of you, I, I see it being successful. I don't see anything make or break. I, I see it being just kind of like keep on keeping on. Knight of Pentacles is a very good card it's earth energy um yeah it's actually more virgo energy too so the idea of being of service um so it isn't necessarily a month where you feel great accolades and appreciation but it, it probably does feel very meaningful like you're you're serving your purpose you're doing the best you can and 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 yeah feeling a sense of accomplishment at the end of the day in terms of money do we have we don't have a lot of pentacle cards so that doesn't mean there isn't going to be any money to me, it doesn't show that there's big changes in money. Um, some of you may have an opera. Some of you may be commissioned to do some sort of artwork. Um, I know all of you aren't artists. I'm sorry. I tend to get these types of readings because, like, I'm an artistic, creative person. So I feel like I attract those people into the readings. But some of you may be commissioned to do something uh, like a drawing or a picture or even photography. Uh, yeah, commission to do something artistic for someone because you're good at it. Maybe make them a video or, or a marketing campaign or something like that. Um, something that maybe is a little more visual or musical or something like that. Um, so that's a potential new source of income. I think it's short term. Like I think it has a, a fixed end date, but you may welcome that in your life if that interests you. Um, any sort of career that is uh, in something more physical or athletic or sports oriented, I'm not even sure what that means, but I, I see that being very successful. Um, possibly a new position. I don't know. I don't know. For my Geminis who are like gym teachers or coaches or, or athletic trainers or bodybuilders, I don't know. Something like that could be quite lucrative. Um, where else do I see potential sources for money? I see a lot of money going to the planning of a wedding. If it's not yours, it has to do with some sort of fam. I, I don't know. It's like something where the whole family is being asked to contribute. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's, for some of you, it's like a fun house. Sorry, that made no sense. It's like an, another house. It's like, okay, we're going to make our dream come true. We're going to buy that little cabana in the tropical island of whatever, but everybody needs to, to you know, give, give to the, uh, the thing uh so it's like the family is collecting money maybe it's for just a family trip or again getting a second property possibly some sort of family wedding it doesn't have to be yours but i i do see weddings here some someone in the mix is having a wedding um and it is coming up in shared resources and income so uh i don't know if you're yeah i, I feel like you're helping to pay for it in some capacity maybe your kid is getting married i don't know that that's coming up for some of you 
yeah, that's that's what I see. I, I have to admit, Gemini, this this reading is very complicated. <laughs> I'm hoping it makes sense for some of you out there. We're going to wrap it up with a couple Oracle cards, something Gemini needs to hear or see. Financial constraints. All right. And healer of ages. All right. Let's read from the book. Number 13. 13, 13, 13. Is that number significant to anyone? Restrictions concerning money. This card shows an old-fashioned safe with a little money, but lots of cobwebs and dust. Money might be tight at this time, so rein in your spending and be circum... I don't even know how to say this. Circumspect about your financial requirements in your life. This is not a time of indulgence, so be aware of what's really important and consciously choose your expenditures. There is a big difference between what you need and what you want. This card is telling you to take care of your needs and bide your time. Things will get better, but for now, be willing to live more conservatively and always value money and the good things you already have. And then 51, five, one. Healer of ages, health and vitality. This powerful being brings the force of ancient wisdom and profound healing. The light of divine consciousness pours from his hands and heart, flowing to you with love and a power, powerful healing intention. This amazing entity is with you now, bringing resolution to physical, mental, and emotional ills, helping to unblock stuck energy and revitalize your life force. You may have felt this strong present recently, or you may just be open to the wonderful sensation now. You can call upon this uh, emissary of miraculous transformation whenever you need vitality, balance, or renewal. Know that at the deepest level, an important healing is taking place. And last but not least, we've been doing crystal cards for each zodiac sign. So for those who are looking to manifest some energy using crystals or need healing energy for Gemini, what can help Gemini this month? For Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Alexandrite for love and fortune. Alexandrite is associated with the astrological sign of Aquarius and the month of June. With its chameleon-esque quality, alexandrite symbolizes hope, prosperity, calm, and fertility, as well as energy, activity, self-expression, and power. In its daylight aspect, it corresponds to luck and good fortune, while at night, it unites the heart and the body, simulating love and passion. All right, Geminis, that's what I got for you for the month of September. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, feel free to book a personal reading with me. There's information on how to do that in the dialogue box below. Other than that, I hope you have a beautiful month. Bye, Gems.